Did you know? Blue Jays are excellent mimics who can imitate hawk calls very well, and they do so frequently, especially the red-shouldered hawk. It is thought that the imitating a hawk calls is to provide information to other jays that a hawk is or was around, or to fool other species into believing a hawk is present so that they get the food to themselves. But most birds quickly return after the jay starts feeding. Sometimes they use these hawk calls when alone perched in a tree, with no apparent danger near. It could be that they find hawk calls easy and close to their jay calls, so they add it to their repertoire. A few years ago, I witnessed a blue jay mimicking merlins, a small falcon, that were nearby courting. The jay done this at the height of breeding season when it was completely alone and clearly making a bunch of other calls. I don't believe it was using their call as an alarm, but rather to add to its repertoire. Often the blue jay adjusts its own calls in order to mimic the sounds of other birds. For example, red-tailed and red-shoulder hawk calls are thought to be modulations of jeer and pump handle calls. Cooper's hawk and eastern screech owl calls are often modulations of inter-pair contact calls. Blue jays can also mimic American crow calls, and jays in captivity have been able to imitate the sounds of domestic felines and some human sounds like cell phone ringtones. Besides mimicking, blue jays make a whole host of other calls. And although not a lot of work has been done on the vocalizations of blue jays, Donald Kruzma, author of The Singing Life of Birds, did a great job of explaining the various calls of blue jays, which he categorized into five different groups. The first being jeer calls, the loud, non-musical calls that are normally used as contact calls or flocking calls. It can alert jays of a threat and is often used to assemble other jays for mobbing of predators, such as hawks. It can also be used to locate their mate. Then there's the pump handle group. These calls sound like whistles and are musical and clear. The squeaky gate call is an example and is usually produced while the one making the call bobs its body up and down. During spring, you can hear a group of jays making some of these pump handle calls, which seem to indicate that they are associated with courtship as well. And some pump handle calls can also be used as a low intensity threat call. Next is the intrapair calls, which are usually fairly quiet calls that are used between pairs when nest building or foraging, and also when interacting with another pair. Depending on the bird's excitement level, intrapair calls can vary. An example of an intrapair call is the bagging call, which is made by young offspring and adult females. The fourth group is the rattle calls, which are done by females only. These are described as a series of rapid clicks that often have one sharp click at the beginning and end of the call. They are normally made while the female making the call bobs up and down. Rattle calls are used as alert calls when another jay intrudes on a pair of space. The fifth group includes any other calls that do not fit in the first four groups. Although blue jays are songbirds by bloodline, they actually don't have a song. With that said though, they do make a quiet vocalization that is most often considered a song. It's called the whisper song and is described as being a soft, quiet conglomeration of clicks, chucks, whirs, whines, liquid notes, and elements of other calls. The whisper song usually lasts about two minutes or longer and tends to be used during the breeding season. The entirety of a Blue Jay's vocal repertoire is acquired within six months from birth. Calls such as jeer or intrapair contact calls are thought to be developed from cries. These calls disappear from the repertoire a few months after their fledgling stage, but return months later in a different context. 
and most of their calls are learned, especially ones from the pump handle group. Experiments have shown that nestlings who are raised in isolation up to their eighth month of life will not develop a squeaky gait call, and the rest of their calls were fairly different from a blue jay's normal calls. However, a nestling that is raised exposed to recorded calls will develop calls that resemble the one of the model. Throughout the course of their lives, blue jays are capable of learning new calls and modifying their old ones. Blue jays also communicate with one another using their crest. When the crest is erected, making a prominent peak, the bird is excited, surprised, or aggressive. If the jay is frightened, the crest bristles out in all directions. If the bird is relaxed, such as foraging with other members of its flock, the crest is laid flat on the head. Other body language displays include snapping of the jay's bill during intense aggressive displays. And when caught in a trap or when nestlings are taken from their nest, they may hammer their beak loudly on perch. So there you have it, a brief explanation of the calls of blue jays. They are really interesting birds, and as much as I've read about them, and as many hours as I've spent closely observing and interacting with blue jays over the last six years, much about them still remains a mystery and hard to comprehend. I've never been so transfixed on a bird like I have the blue jay. I hope much more study goes into these intelligent birds so we can gain a better understanding of them and their complicated social system. I think Donald Kruzma said it best when he said, Yes, I'm hooked on these songbirds without a song. I'm convinced there's something deep and rich here, that spending time studying the pairs at a few nests and listening to these jays awake will provide a window on their minds. I couldn't agree more. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to comment below any interesting information about blue jay calls or anything else to do with them for that matter. And make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to see more. Happy birding! Mm -hmm.